I'm Nadine Weisskopf, and I am the Vice President of Product Management at Access Data. I am so pleased you could all join us today to get a sneak peek of FTK Information 6.0. As part of a renewed focus on improving the eDiscovery offering and creating a tighter integration between forensics and eDiscovery, we're going to be rolling out this release very soon with a lot of exciting new features to both Summation and FTK, which Scott is going to walk you through today. And with that, I'll pass it to Scott. Thanks very much, Nadine. Really appreciate that. Everybody can hear me, I assume, and can see my screen now. Uh, my name is Scott Lefton. I am a sales engineer at Access Data. I have been here about five years. I'm a former Summation user, Summation trainer. Uh, I've worked at the law firm level, at the vendor level, and at the software level. Um, and um, I've, I've, I'm a one-time Summation eyes user, and uh, really I've been so, so with some of our forensic products lines, and I've been you know supporting those products for a long time. So I'm really excited to have this opportunity to show you what's uh, you know coming out uh, here in 6.0 and what's on the roadmap. The first thing I'd like to talk about. Uh, which is a big thing for us. I've been a, a preacher of this for a long time. It's the, the ability to really integrate not just FTK and Summation, but our entire product line. And we are continuing to uh, provide further enhancements uh, and keep that integration uh, as part of our uh, offering. Uh, as you can see here on this side, that we are the only, on this slide, Access Data is the only provider for a truly integrated solution to streamline the investigative and e-discovery process, offering seamless interability between EK and Summation and really all of our products that we have out there. And to me, I think that is such a big deal because historically, there's a disconnect between folks who, like our, our, our FDK users and our Summation users. Those are, those are traditionally been very separate uh, groups of people, separate tools. And I feel very passionate about that the process needs to be joined. That then folks who are tasked with collecting data also, you know, downstream uh, can better offer more efficient processes for the folks who have to take that, that data into a court of law, is a civil court or, or a criminal court. And what we've done here on this slide is try to show uh, exactly the type of interoperability that I'm talking about, um, just because I think a lot of people don't quite understand what this really means. Um, we have a unified SQL database that supports all of our, our products. It's the same basic schema. We also rely upon our tried and true FTA evidence processing engine, which is very robust, to handle just hundreds and hundreds of file types, data. It does very, very quickly. We support distributed processing, but essentially all of our products use that same component. Um, over here on the right of this slide, you see the evidence. What this diagram is trying to describe is that whether you're an FTK user or a Summation user, you could be looking at the same unified database, look at the same evidence processing using a single evidence processing engine. At data, uh, essentially just boil, uh, bubbles up into the interface. Whichever interface, pick and choose whatever UI you want to use. If you're a Zix user, you can use FTK, a lab or enterprise. If you're more of a legal person, you could use Summation or eDiscovery. But these collaborate collaboration, right? Brings teams together. Uh, I think that just creates for some really unique and exciting new work that are truly seamless, more efficient. Uh, the benefits are going to be saving time and money, and most importantly, reduce for smoothiation, if you ask me. That's the, hand, the biggest reason I, I think this is, uh, is important. The data stays in one place, and it does not move. We are moving data from FTK into summation. It's simply a unified platform. And you can choose which set of goggles you want to look at that platform with. So that's what uh, the diagram is really all about. And uh, here on this slide, you can see a handful of things that we're specifically doing to keep that integration solid and enhance it. Um, following enhancements uh, to the integration allow uh, the users further benefit from the shared case database. We've done improvements to the indexing, so essentially um, creating a more Full proof index, uh, whether you've got users in the summation uh, user interface, maybe they're adding information to the index that will immediately be av available to FTK users uh, in the FTK interface. Um, we have location settings more consistent across the line, and we also now share the same audit log. Generally speaking, 
thinking the improvements with integration are going to be just essentially workflow related. Um, right now, today, uh, most folks might start off creating the case in FTK and then just allow certain web reviewers to come in via summation. That's typically our, our forensics uh, a lab workflow. Um, and, and that's a work that you have to commit to when you're using um, you know, AD Lab in that fashion. Um, our nation users typically create cases in summation and evidence in summation would then only do additional analysis in FTK. With 6.0, there's going to be more freedom okay, to create your cases wherever you want to create them. There'll be more freedom to figure out where you want to process, how you want to process. And again, we're just, again, trying to enhance the integration between these two, two products. And it really deals with, with, with workflow, so there'll be some improvements with, with work, workflow there. All right, FTK 6.0, here are some of the key new features that we have coming out here for you in 6.0. Most notably is what we're calling FTK Web Viewer. Which nation? The best is we're actually going to bundle these things together. And it's going to give FTK users the ability to simply check a box during load of FTK if you'd like to include the FTK Web Viewer. So it will be completely bundled together, and it brings really that power of the summation tool set with the, you know, binds the power of the summation tool set with the FTK tool set to make really more complete product. Okay, so you can do things like conduct case, early case assessment earlier. Um, you can, you know, attorneys or lay people instant access into the case database. Now I look at this like, you know, an FTK user has a specific job. Get data, process the data, recover the data. But when they recover that data, they have a clue what they've recovered. That's to decide that is up to a lawyer or a prosecutor uh, to decide, well, what are those files that this guy just uncovered? He, the, the FD, that's that disconnect I'm talking about. So FTK Web Viewer, I think, brings people together. It, it will offer better collaboration, but also just simply give the FTK user features that they didn't have before, like things like being able to create low files and do web review and see email threads uh, and see clutter analysis and use our, our visualization tools tools, okay? Uh, it's going to be a whole new experience for our uh, tried and true FTK web, uh, our FTK user base if they want to use that web viewer. Another key thing for a, 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 a segment, maybe not everybody, but a certain segment of our user group, I think is going to just love this next new feature. It's called multi-case search and web view. Sometimes when cases have related data, folks want to do a, 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 a global search, a global keyword search across all cases or maybe just select cases. So I'm really excited about that feature uh, that we're calling multi-case or cross-case search, and we're going to take a look at that in, 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 in just a little bit. Volcato Copy is actually a feature that's been in here for a while, but we're really just you know highlighting it here today. Um, we are very good at dealing with volume shadow copies within an FDK. Um, you don't need to rely on third-party tools. So we want to make sure everybody's aware of what we do for volume shadow copy, that we quickly display differences, the differentials between volume shadow, co volume shadow copies, uh, and make doing forensics on volume shadow copy really, really easy in FTK. Uh, another couple things, one I'm, I'm really excited about, too, is the Internet artifacts. Uh, we're making essentially some parsers, some dick carvers, uh, building in some internet artifacts to help things, help you find things like Facebook artifacts, Dropbox artifacts, uh, essentially a, a quick internet artifacts finder. And we're continuing to enhance the type of artifacts that we can uh, pull out of the data set. For our mobile users, folks who do mobile investigations, handling uh, Celebrite and XRY images today, we're giving a new compatibility for folks who are coming from site or XRY and want to uh, continue their workflow uh, in FTK, we're going to support those data file types. Uh, with 6.0, we're coming out with a new agent certificate. Uh, users can continue to integrate with uh, party applications for the agent deployment. And this is big too. Lastly, Windows 10 support. Uh, hard to believe that's already here, and we're, we're seeing quite a bit of uh, Windows 10 ready. Uh, so we're really we've got pretty much Windows 10 support all over our roadmap. With Stato, it's going to be uh, compatibility for the client. You'll eventually see uh, Windows uh, 10, 10 agent support 
uh, as well as eventually uh, installation support. But the client use uh, for Windows 10 will be uh, coming out. Screenshot to show you of cross-case searching a web review. Um, there is a tab here at the bottom, or at the, the very last tab here. Um, and you can see on this system we just had a couple cases, but you can select which cases you want to search. Type in a search term and click search, and then it will tell you the item hit counts. So I see I have two hit counts for the word confidential uh, in that first case, and then 1080 in this one. And then they actually give you the results. So you can see, okay, there are the 1080, uh, and if you click open and review, you can immediately go to that case and see those search results and perform a bulk tagging or bulk coding operation. Or what to do at that point. You can uh, click select columns to pick and choose in this window what columns you want to see. Okay. Talk about some of the key new enhancements for summation 6 data. Um, multi environment. Reduce e discovery costs while ensuring data security. Um, so, we've got a few new features self made account setup Dropbox, and, uh, which we're calling Law Drop and a admin role. Th these are really geared for the ASP clients, folks who are hosting things in the cloud. One of the biggest problems that we see, that we out, that hosted service providers um, think about, is really the manpower that it takes to make it in and out. And that when you're in a hosted environment, there's a lot of effort that, uh, uh, that, that it takes to get client data up into the cloud and then to get client back out of the cloud, right? So if you're using a hosted solution, how do you do that today? Most common is FTP. So what I mean essentially that I'm really excited about is law drop. Law drop is what meets the ground. Okay? As you as a, a, a reviewer, a user of the, the summation application, whether it's in-house or whether it's in ASP or hosted environment, law drop, the ability to quickly upload and data files to the cloud without the need of a human being working on a you know F FTP site or giving me credentials to a secure FTP site. It's a secure file transfer protocol directly built into the environment. What makes this secure is the admin role that we've also developed. What the admin role does, because I I, honestly I don't think anybody is doing anything like this. Some admin a permit now that you can find, which really, if you are an ASP, you can give your customers the sub-admin role, which is secure ac application access to do pretty much whatever they want, but only see what you want them to see. Do right now today where users, uh, if they have an application admin account, can browse and see things that are on the server. So this provides really robust security for providers, as well as the ability to the power of the data and the data pushing and pulling into their clients' hands. So calling the project manager on Friday at 9 o'clock at night, asking them, hey, can you upload this? Can you download this? Eventually, they will have that secure capability to do that themselves, even though this is in the cloud managed by a service provider. So this is a screenshot of what law drop, I'm sorry, what law drop looks like. Um, there here, Fudge Drop, and you will see essentially your cases. There is uh, in this system two cases. We could put this a little bit later too, but I just want to give you a little screenshot of it. There's a take folder and there's an exports folder. The idea is literally drag and drop. You are a user of summation, you have files on your desktop that you want to get quickly into summation, you drag and drop them onto this space. So immediately up, you can click the upload button or click upload all, and they will upload essentially into the queue. I click on the add evidence button, you see the add evidence wizard, and load these yourself. Okay? So it's direct. I like to think of it as where the cloud meets the ground. Okay? I can quickly, right from the ground, right from my own desktop, throw something up to the cloud. And vice versa. If we have exports and production sets, those will be in the exports folder. Quickly download those to my machine, my machine from the cloud. There's also what's called a my drop space, which is for the user themselves. So, like, I'm logged in as the administrator. That's my drop space.
space. So I only see what is in my drop space. Uh, and then shared with me is a folder where if you want to share something that's in your drop space, you can right click and share the files with somebody else if you want uh, to pass that on to somebody else. So really exciting, neat new features, I think, for pushing and pulling data out of a hosted platform called Log Drop. Here is just a quick little screen grab of where the new sub-admin is located. It's under admin roles. Uh, here under sub-administrator, you can designate somebody the right to sub-admin. And what that does is essentially it, it limits what they can browse to on the server. It's a, it's a, it's a granular permission control designed specifically for hosted environments, if you ask me. You don't want uh, users to, um, you know, to be going anywhere that they shouldn't be going. So you get to control exactly uh, where they can look on the summation server and control their file level, file level permissions. Another key thing to sub-admin is if you are a sub-admin, when you're doing export sets, if you're familiar with export sets in nation, that is the default location in the exports folder uh, within, within the law drop. So that is essentially the problem that we've solved there is today, when user does an export set, can browse, and they can put that export set wherever they want on the server. Again, that's not good for a hosted environment. So this directs the export to go to a specifically safe, secure location that only the client can see. So really, the sub-admin role is all about. Okay, so there you see, again, just on this little slide, too, for Summation 6.0 for application service providers, ASPs, multi-tenant platform with an end-user administrative functionality gives your clients a cost-effective alternative to expensive private cloud solutions with fit of on-demand any access to manage their own discovery. Said, forget it. Couldn't be any simpler. I love this, th that, that fact. Again, put the in your client's hand, uh, and uh, hopefully maybe those project managers will get a, a vacation day or a day off maybe sometime in the future uh, by leveraging uh, this technology. And, and, and giving the power to the clients and, and letting them kind of run with it themselves, set it and forget it. Okay? Here's some continued 6.0 feature enhancements. I the no one thing here. I, I get more excited probably than any other else. It's browser briefcase. Um, this is unlike, I think, anything else out there. I'm excited about this. So, you, you know, our, uh, our customers, especially up um, in Canada, were really uh, pushing for this. Um, because they have specific requirements where they have some low-tech users, right? And um, some of those folks aren't so sophisticated <laughs> technology-wise. So we needed a really easy way to distribute data. So we enhanced the legacy browser briefcase format. And if you just ask me, I'm so excited about this. We'll actually do this in, in a little bit. But it is, a, it is the legacy browser briefcase in, in the sense that there's an HTML view that you can provide to, to the customer. Uh, to whoever the you know the recipient, but literally now the problem with the legacy browser briefcase is you can the files. You would have to click on the link and open them in its native application. New browser briefcase we have included our viewer, so there's a quick way to, without any software required, somebody a browser briefcase and allow them to see the documents, saw on the documents, and actually code documents themselves. And again, no software required. If you're a, uh, an attorney who's a little technophobe and they're not into technology, maybe, they're, maybe they don't have a sophisticated <laughs> or, 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 or litigation support platform, but you need to get the data to them, browser briefcase is, is awesome. That's exactly what it's designed for. Quick and easy way to deliver documents with no software required. Also, we have some unitization enhancements. The, the, we have the ability to break up large documents by splitting merging now, um, and large document handling by the summation viewer. Again, this is something really unique that only we are doing. And it's that large PDFs are on the rise. Like, huge PDF files seem to be very common, and the numbers of, of times we start to see large PDFs, is, is, it, we're seeing them quite often now. We've designed some capabilities in our summation viewer better handle large documents. I'm talking documents that might have thousands and thousands of pages, uh, might be gigabytes or meg, you know, hundreds of megs in size. 
And what we've done is a little trick where relative to your cursor, most of the legacy, most of the technology out there just does not know how to handle a document like that. You go on it and it tries to load every page or load the whole file, and it will typically crash or it just will not be viewable. What we have done is in our standard viewer, it only download basically five pages before and after where the user's cursor is. So if you had 10,000 page document, you're actually not, not looking at all 10,000 pages, nor are we trying to cache 10,000 pages into memory. We're only doing what's humanly viewable at that time relative to your cursor. So if you're going through the document, you're okay. Just next, next, next. Even through 10,000 pages, you will be okay. Um, but it is still viewable, uh, and I think that is honestly a really great feature, too, for our summation user base because that, that large PDF seemed to be a pretty common thing. Document groups, we, uh, if you're familiar with document groups in summation, uh, we have designed some enhancements to allow users to basically be more flexible with their document groups, you know, add documents to an existing document group or rename the document group. We're supporting Active Directory integration um, to basically better, uh, you know, import your Active Directory users and provide a single sign-on uh, for your Active Directory uh, uh, Active Directory accounts. So here's a screenshot, and I think when we get down to the, uh, when I get through my PowerPoint, we'll take a look at a few of these things. Here's a screenshot of the new interactive browser briefcase, okay? And no software required. You get, it's a folder with wheels in it. And you tell the user to essentially right-click on the summation browser briefcase it's executable. I one here on my, on my desktop. We can take a look at what the structure looks like. So here is the browser briefcase. This is what the structure looks like. There's the viewer, there's the indexes, um, there's the Swifts, which are uh, basically the uh, allow for, uh, show us basically our Swifts are what render in the viewer. You could open the file name, but essentially you just right click on this guy, run, and that's what pops up. In this case, there's really not a lot to look at, but what columns you have in your browser briefcase will, there, will be there. And then the user can click on a document to immediately see the document in the browser briefcase. A go software request. It's an open source way to deliver your documents to, in my opinion, in, what, you know, in instances when you might not have a very savvy user, maybe an expert witness or somebody you just need to get the documents to, or it's uh, you know, a lawyer who, again, maybe doesn't have any kind of sophisticated platform, but you need to get, deliver those documents, and you want to make it searchable. So by clicking search all documents, you can still search on the full text and what is in the grid. You native. And if you're native, you'll see it in the viewer. You can also view the image, and you can also open it directly from the browser the briefcase. Uh, if you've run a search, like here I ran a search for the word government, I will see in the viewer all the hits for that in the browser briefcase. I, I think this is really – and then one other feature is export tag. So say you're, you deliver this to an expert witness that here's all the Excel spreadsheets. You're doing forensic accounting for us, and they can manipulate it themselves – they also can tag the ones they want and export those files if they need to export those out uh, to their, you know, if they want to export those out, uh, they can export directly from the browser briefcase. So new features. You'll also notice the viewer is built in again. They can zoom. There's zoom controls, page controls. This is awesome because, again, no, no native software required. Let's say you've got a hodgepodge of WordPerfect and Excel and email and AutoCAD. They need those native applications to view these. We'll render in the viewer. Okay, so I'm really excited about that. It's probably one of the most things I get more excited about than anything else. Um, so let's. That's a screenshot of the new browser briefcase. Let's go on through here. Here's again some additional 6.0 uh, continued features. Optical character recognition. We've extended our OCR engine to deal with multi languages. So when you're in the user interface now and you click OCR. You can choose which language you want to see. Our. We are also increasing the speed and uh, making sure that uh, if we had any there bugs, uh, fixes that are also included in those OCR enhancements. Credit card and phone numbers, if you're familiar with the entity extraction capability, uh, we are enhancing that just to make sure that we're more accurate with what we extract, uh, that we aren't getting any false positives for credit card or phone numbers. Uh, job templates, scheduling job templates, again, to help users save time when they want to schedule jobs. 
Um, case organizer, unlike any other competitor, that too, I could spend the neck all of our time right from here out just talking about case organizer, which I, I'm very, very, very much um, actually a part of those enhancements, uh, near and dear to my heart. But essentially, we've integrated uh, fact and issue management as well as we've integrated the notes capability. The note tool has been fully integrated into case organizer. It's easier to do case organizer reports. Um, there's just a lot, and again, hopefully if we have some time at the end, I can show you some of those things. But there's a lot that's been uh, baked into the case organizer, which I think makes it much, much more useful uh, and user-friendly than, than what we have right now. We're all exposing more columns uh, in, the, uh, in the item list. We have new options to allow you to determine if a document has been OCR'd, encrypted, commodified, has notes, hidden rows or worksheets, has track changes. Track changes is huge. It seems like somebody asked me about track changes at least um, once a week, uh, and we're now exposing documents that have track changes in the in the uh, item list. So if you want to see that, you'll also see, see columns for like when documents were last saved or printed uh, was revised, how much was spent, how much time was spent on revising. So we're exposing much more data, especially around office documents now. Sorter for email attachments. Um, we thought it was kind of tricky to really know how to sort parents and, and attachments due to our naming convention. So we just made it a lot easier on our users by just adding a quick family sort option, which keeps basically parents and children always together in the item list for easy sorting. So here's a new case or here's a screenshot of the new case organizer integration. All right. If you've seen the panel in existing user interface, uh, you notice that there, it looks very much the same, but we've done a real few key enhancements. Number one, we added the report button. Two, we integrated the notes capability. Again, it might seem like, hey, notes aren't, you know, how much improvement can you do on the notes tool, right? It might not seem like a huge improvement, but to me, I think this is a big, I feel like notes is an everyday thing that most of our customers use. And I'm really excited about this enhancement. The idea is when you're in a viewer, if you're looking at a doc document, okay, you click create note and you write the text that you want. A new will pop up asking you where do you want that note to go? Do you want to create a new case organizer note or do you add it to an existing case organizer called notes? Here, I've got two notes on this document. Note one, it tells me the object ID of what I'm looking at, i.e. the exhibit number, and the page to which this note comes from. If you go down, you will see all of the notes on this document. You click report to generate a quick report of all the notes on this document or notes across all of your documents, however you want to do it. It's, so, it's really flexible. You can also click magnifying glass to have immediately take you directly to the image to where that excerpt comes from. This tool, document, and scripts, it works the exact same. Okay? So if you ask me, I think these kinds of improvements will really make a difference to the everyday uh, users, especially just doing things like simply taking notes, right? The view is also completely customizable. It's a fully, pro fully functioning word processor. So if you want to add a chart, an image, or for like in, uh, bullet points or numbers or a fully functional web uh, uh, processor. You've got bold and indent and underline and uh, formatting options and style options. So look at this like I, in my law firm experience, I saw so many years cutting and pasting things into Word that I would hope that this is going to save the time as well as just maintain the chain of custody and, and, and keep better track of where these things come from. Uh, you can also create document links uh, directly in the viewer in the comment section. So if you want to link this uh, as, a, if, as a user is reading through all your, you know, marketing contract case notes or whatever, you know, witness Smith decision notes, uh, as they're reading through that, they can quickly go to the document or click on a link and jump right to a particular document. And when you are done and you want to put this in a report format, Simply now just click the report button. And this will create either a interactive PDF with all work product 
product in it or a DOCX file, again, with all of your work product. What I mean work product, I mean all of your comments, all of your details, all of your tags, all of your supplemental files, and all of the evidence that is linked to this case organizer object as well. It's like a fully self-contained package of work product. That is what this case new organizer is all about. Uh, I'm just so excited that we've integrated our notes capability really into the case organizer as well. I, th I think that's going to be very, very helpful. Another key thing, and uh, again, a problem that I think we have solved, or a, a piece of real innovation, if you ask me, is dealing with how do we now organize and search on these notes. When you create a case organizer note, or really any object, you'll on the left, the object types now displays your actual case notes. So facts or, or and so people, whatever case organizer objects you have in there will appear under this list of object types, case organizer. And by simply clicking on notes and apply, it finds those case, ob uh, case organizer objects for you in the item list. And we treat, and it syncs, it syncs to the panel. So as you go through the list of notes and you click on a note, you'll see all of the context, all of the links, all the details, tags, and so forth. All notes. It search for some content maybe in your notes, like say, find me where are all my notes that talk about government compliance. Simply type compliance and go, and it brings you right to your notes that deal with government compliance, and then just click on the link or something to show where did that note come from within the context of a document. So that's how we can now uh, notes are a part of the item list, and you can filter, and you can search, and you can organize, and you can code notes just like any other object in your database. So that's uh, some of the key new improvements that we've done really to, to the note taking. So with, the, with the rest of our time here, I'm gonna actually fire up uh, a beta version and we'll uh, take a look at a couple of these features. So here we have uh, our beta install. Let me go to the home page. Let's take a look at uh, Lawbox. Law, my bad. Looks like we haven't updated the UI. So the log drop now appears uh, on the last tab. What it looks like. Different cases. We can uh, click on an intake folder. See is it, what folders are inside of the intake folder. If I right click and say create new folder, I can quickly create a new folder. If I click on this one that I was playing with yesterday, and I upload some files. I can now see here's my volume one intake folder, and I've got my, my name next to it. And let's go ahead and see what I've got here. Maybe I've got some uh, file that we can just go ahead and just kind of show you what I'm talking about. So if I click a file on Windows now, again, this is where the cloud meets the ground. Okay, This is in the cloud, but I'm on the ground. I just drag and drop that thing onto the window, Okay, and that sends that up to the cloud. And so that was listed here. I can click all or cherry pick the ones I want to upload, and then boom, done. It's now loaded into the system. Now if I come over here and click this folder right here, I try to add evidence or create, fo I'm sorry, uh, it is right here, add evidence, that little window right there. You select what you want to do. You can do a folder or you can do a file. Um, click this button, and that will immediately just take you right to the add evidence wizard so that you load those files or that particular file yourself. Okay? Again, the idea is really geared towards the ASP providers. Let your customer do your own loading at two in the morning. Okay? Uh, don't, let, don't let them bother you. This is an easy to process. They just click native files, they choose their method, and it will already have essentially loaded this file up and just follow the wizard to uh, kick off the processing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cancel this. We'll go back to, to the log drop. Uh, I'll show you, too, that, that if any productions and export sets, unfortunately, I don't think there weren't any in, in any of this case, but you would see those files there, and you can also, vice versa, you can, you can download them you know, to, uh, from the cloud. Uh, also, upload files to your drop space, which would only be viewable to you, you your user, called My Drop Space. But they'll move data in and out of uh, the drop space. And if you'd like to share it with somebody, you can click share. 
and then the pair and pick the user of who you want to share this with. So then say like invite people who you I want to share this with. I can see that I shared it with one member, uh, Aji Stevens, uh, who's a member of our development. But it'll go ahead and you can go see who else is there if I wanted to share it with administrator. And this is just going to immediately start to look for folks in your system, not users in the system, but uh, they tell you that this is shared for one member. And then when Aji, Aji Stevens logs in, he's going to see that in his shared with me folder. So it's a great way to share, collaborate um, well, uh, with objects in the log, log drop. All right, let's get uh, cross case search. Let's do a cross case search. Cross search is right here. Uh, it's the last tab over. Um, and certainly for our customers that I think um, maybe who deal with like insurance or maybe defense law, they're dealing with maybe they're handling a number of cases for the same client, and they they want to search across a group of cases uh, for a specific you know keyword or something like that. The idea is we can go ahead and tighten a keyword now. We'll just do test and click search. So I've checked off two cases there, and I kick off a search across you know two or more cases. Start to give you a status like submitted, completed, executed. So boom, boom it's all done. And here in IG case one, we have eight hits, and there are my eight hits. By relevancy ranking, I can choose which columns I want. I could go click Open Search in Review to look those objects uh, if I wanted to, to look at those. I can also click like here. Let's go ahead and this one that had you know quite a bit more. This one had 1,600 hits. There are 1,600 hits in the that particular case number two, and click Open in Review if I wanted to go go to there. Back to we'll see what else we had uh, here uh, in the PowerPoint uh, we wanted to kind of demonstrate here. Oh, browser briefcase. Let's do that. I love the new browser briefcase. Here on my desktop, let me uh, back out of here. On my desktop, I have a sample of the browser briefcase. Let's launch this guy. All right, there. Open the quick. Click on document. There's document. There you go. We have successfully uh, just basically give this folder any user. Again, no software required. They really don't need to like they don't need summation to use this. They just need a folder. All the prerequisites are essentially in that, that folder. Uh, they can go ahead and you know click on a particular document here. I want to look at this one. And then what I really like about this is it lets the user add their own information. So I've been if I'm like you know an expert and I want to type in my note or something like that, I can put my own, own notes. Uh, and then go ahead and uh, you know quickly do that, so I can see the documents. Uh, again, in this example, there really wasn't like a ton of uh, data in there, but you can see that. And let's go ahead and just run a search here too. Boom, you know, do a search for the word test, and I can search on it, so I can quickly see the results. I just think this is huge. I mean, give your data to somebody, a non-sophisticated user. Like they have no art. There, there should be. They should come back with you. No excuse for why they can't use this stuff. Okay, it's fully searchable, editable, viewable. Okay, no software required. So there's a demonstration of browser briefcase. They can also, like I said, if I wanted to take. Okay, I've received these. I found all my documents that have the word test in it. I want to actually now export the test documents to a file folder. Uh, I can do that uh, just by clicking export tagged. Uh, you can also, you know, in the viewer, click on and see where the hits are. So if you're not familiar with our, our AD standard viewer, like we have really great things for searching. We highlight the search term for you. We show you if it's in the context of a multi-page document. Let's say this is a thousand-page PDF, and the word for hit is on page 737. And you'll see right about here there's a little tick mark, and you can just jump directly to that hit within the context of a very large document. And again, our viewers built in, so even with large PDFs, you're going to be able to see that hit uh, on the page, even if it's in a very large PDF. All right, so this is a, uh, a live demo of the browser briefcase. Let me take a look here at what we also had on our agenda. I'll show you some of the new case organizer uh, tools, and then we'll go ahead and uh, open up the floor for any uh, comments or questions, I think. Uh, open up the floor, but I believe, as uh, our host was saying, too, we can... We can look at the chat and see what kind of questions have come in. So, go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, this project here in review. 
That's what I'm talking about. So here's the new notes tool. Okay, so this is a, this is a live document. Um, you can actually click on the, in the case organizer to, to uh, expand and collapse uh, these uh, objects like that. I can actually expand and collapse them. So if I've got a lot of a lot of notes on the uh, uh, a lot of notes on the page, I can expand them and collapse them. I can see there's multi, mul multiple notes, you know, in this uh, in this wizard. I can also, like for example, let's see here. Let's see if we can get this to work here. So see how on page one of a four-page document. Well, this is on page three. So by actually just double-clicking on magnifying glass down there, it may be because I've done this right. And again, this is beta, so sometimes. They may have changes just in recently that, uh, didn't, but the the idea is that sh oh that I'm clicking on the wrong, wrong one. Let's make sure I'm clicking on the right one. The, this will take you to, uh in the viewer at least it should to where where that hit is in the document. Oh there it goes finally. So there it goes just a little while. So there you go. and also you can so here just to demonstrate like what this virtual notes tool looks like is. You click on the note there, so as you're, you know, go through a document, uh, it's create a note. And imagine, like I said, imagine this is a um, transcript or something like that. It works the same. You select the text. Say, well, where do you want this note to go? Use the existing note, or do you want to put it, create a new note? Uh, if we say use an existing note, I'll come in here and say let's add it to this one I've already got going, Okay. Uh, this one's particularly called this, uh, you know, contracting notes. And then click OK, add it to the note there in the in the in the in, in the background. And that'll go ahead and add a note, and then you can see that it'll be linked, and it'll tell you where that note came from. You'll also notice that the notes is no longer uh, over here, uh, where, where where it was it was over here in five six three. We've moved it, you know, integrated it, fully integrated. It. With uh, with case organizer, so what uh, those notes improvements are all about? I can see those notes there, and then click on you know, a set of notes that you want to jump to. So you know you want to go to the David Jones deposition notes. You click that, you'd see all the notes there, and you could click report. You know when you're done uh, to actually um, you know, put that into a, a format like a PDF or Word document. So they can go click report. Um, and get that wizard up. That's what this new report generation wizard looks like. And I've already done a, a report if you want to look at it. Um, but essentially, you, you can include the files themselves. So that's like what's linked into the uh, into the document. Like I said, I'll go back to what I'm, this is creating a report of all of your own work product, all the comments, the details about this uh, these notes, um, the you know, whatever kinds of objects you've got here. You can pick and choose. You know, what are they that you want to include in the report? Your your notes, my notes. Notes, um, include the files, include a title page, a confidentiality statement, and a uh, introduction. And then just click OK, and that's going to generate the report. And I believe I have on my desktop here somewhere, hopefully pretty, uh, pretty viewable. Um, I have my, my reports here. So here, browser the briefcase reports looks like. Oh, it's not the one that I wanted. My bad. It's uh. See. Well, we could use that, that one. I thought, apologize. I thought I had this, this one fired up and ready to go. It's like I didn't. You'll get the idea from this one. This is just what I did a while back. So, like your cover page and whatever information you have in the report will be in there. Like the list of the documents, uh, the list of actual, you know, all comments from your notes. And if you had any documents, that were associated, those would actually be in there. Let's actually download it because I already did this yesterday. I, I want to make sure that we actually show you this. So on the home page here under reports, when you generate one of those new reports, it shows up under the report section under case organized reports. So I'm glad you deleted it last night. It should still be here and it'll be under this case organizer reports. Yep, there it is. This is the one I'm looking for. Because this is awesome too. Like the the, the briefcase is a great way to deliver your actual discovery, 
I think this is a great way to say your own work product. Maybe share this with your with your client. So here's that report for the uh, co-marketing case notes report. There's my cover page that tells me the name of the case. Uh, give it a title. You can tell who authored it. Here are my notes. Okay? It tells me, if I didn't really fill out much about these notes, but like, you know, the note, status, impact. What, if I had tagged my notes, it's like what shoes were tagged with these. It shows me the name of the object. I can click on that, uh, uh, and I can actually quickly see here are actually – these are the documents that included. So that's, that's the source. So object ID, three page one, like that's right here, okay? And there's my actual tra- you know, excerpt from the note. And what happens is, which I love, is we flip sheet all documents that were included in the report. So it actually gives me, here's the first exhibit, and it tells me the name of the file. Here's the, uh, uh, here's the next exhibit, and it tells me the name of the file, and then the file. So I've just created an interactive PDF with all my own work product and all of the, you know, the, the evidence that supports my work product, my notes, and so forth. And then um, this just does it kind of like in the situation of a document, but imagine that we were, that we were looking at a script. It would look very much the same way. You could, you know... You could export transcript notes the same way and uh, combine uh, and link all of your case, your, your case uh, elements, your case materials together uh, and bring it into a, a, a report if you had to do that. So uh, that's, what the, uh, that's what it looks like. And, uh, too, it couldn't be any easier. We, just, we built that reporting feature right into, the, right into the panel. You just click on report uh, when you're looking at the case organizer panel to, uh, uh, to generate that, that report. And then um, as you check off evidence here, you can click add evidence or remove evidence. So that's how you, how you use that, that panel. With that said, I think, we're gonna, uh, I think those are the key things that I wanted to show for you guys. I'll, I'll say that uh, if Nadine or Jeff, if you guys have anything that you would like to add, feel free to do so. I know that uh, you wanted me to mention that we're going to be at ILTA next week, but the week after. If I'm doing, if I'm looking at my camera, right, and, and we'll be at booth number 200. I will be there actually myself, so uh, I would be happy to give you guys, you know, a live demo or talk about any questions. You can also visit this link here, uh, marketing.accessdata.com 6.0 release for more information on 6.0 and where you can download a brochure. Uh, Jessica, I don't know if you've been monitoring the chat uh, window at all. I've been doing the demo, but if there are any particular questions that you would like to toss out there, I'd be happy to entertain some questions while, while we have some time left. Okay, thank you, Scott. Uh, yes, we have got a couple questions. And the first one is, is an easy one we'll start with. Uh, when is the release date scheduled? Currently slated for September. Uh, I guess as I would look to mid to the last half of September, need to have a better drop date on that, but uh, September our goal. So next month, so pretty, close, pretty soon. All right. Um, will the browser briefcase give the attorney the ability to review documents when they don't have access to an internet connection instead of having to print those documents? Yes, yes, it, it will. As long as they have the folder, like I said, when you right click and say create browser briefcase, it creates a self-contained package into a folder, and then there is essentially all of the prerequisites. There's no internet required. There's no software required. There's just a re- computer required. It's a basic computer with basic prerequisites. The only prerequisite that I'm aware of is Adobe Flash, which I would say probably most everybody has on their machine already. But the question, there's no software required. There's no internet access required. They just, they just right-click and run, and it's a self-contained little applet. Um, somebody had to ask, if I tag email items in summation, are those tag items also available or bookmarked within FTK for additional analysis or PST export? If I could that person ask that question, I would. <laughs> if I could reach through the phone and give them a big hug, I would say, welcome to the family. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and vice versa. And vice versa. If you're an FTK user and you find a smoking gun, you're like, hey, I just recovered this deleted encrypted document. It looks like some of the lawyers I want to look at. They're immediately going to 
see that. So long as they have permissions to see, you know, those files, and it depends on how the case is set up. But yeah, any notes, so those columns, so if they're doing issue coding, and issue tagging, and creating attorney notes in column view, columns are also viewable in the FTK uh, uh, UI immediately, immediately available. Okay. So hopefully that's your question. Yeah, passed on the hug, though, so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, somebody, another follow-up on the browser briefcase had asked, does the user require administrator rights to run the browser briefcase? I just did that because I have a have IT <laughs> running everything as an admin because I am an admin, but no, they can just double-click on that executable. Just the theory would be they would need... If this is a super lockdown machine where the user is like doesn't even have the rights to run an executable, um, you know, I, I, that could potentially block it. But uh, they don't. It's not a requirement to run as an admin. They just they just need to double click on that and essentially they have you know Windows rights to run things. Um, somebody wanted to know too. Are there any significant changes to the SK six interface? Interface. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. Not, really. no, <laughs> okay. not that I'm not that not that I'm aware of. Uh, I, I think what you'll see is you'll see more consistent the de deduplication settings. Um, will probably be more consistent within FDK now for like email deduplication. Uh, the there will be some UI changes to make sure that the audit log is the same. But I think. At first glance, you're not going to see really any difference. Okay. I asked Scott, they get a lot of discovery that's in PDF form. They will know if the tool is as effective if they don't have a mix of native files, but primarily PDF. Yeah, absolutely. And so if you get PDF files, um, what I tell um, folks who just get like PDFs is to, if you can, before you load them in, actually. So, like, if you have Adobe Acrobat, you know, you know, kind of like would give the same response to folks who are like, hey, we have paper. Like, how do I deal with paper? We scan it to a searchable PDF. And if you go to a searchable PDF through the Add Evidence Wizard, which is like right here, click on the plus sign, um, and then just walk through evidence, um, it, your life going to be better. When you do keyword search on the PDF, it will actually take you directly to where that keyword is in viewer. Even though it started off as a paper document, scanning it to PDF and then making it searchable before, prior, you know, prior to loading it into summation, um, your life will be good. Life like, will be fully searchable even though it might have started off as a scanned piece of paper. Uh, so if you can do that, great. Now, if, if you can't, like maybe if you just don't have Adobe Acrobat uh, and you don't have any kind of you know, technology at your scanner to OCR. You can always OCR after the fact, which is, you know, in our actions list here. Uh, click OCR documents uh, so that they do become searchable. But the reason why I say OCR them first is because that hit highlighting will not work this way. So what happened is we just create a text file then. When you OCR, you create a text file, which is then viewable in the text viewer, not the image viewer. And like in my decade litigation support experience, like, Folks don't want to see the hit in a text file. They want to see it on the actual show me the page, on the image, did that hit occur. So that's my advice is uh, ingest it as a searchable PDF. And even though it may be paper, uh, it will still be uh, completely searchable. The hit lighting will work in our natural viewer, and life will be good. All of the metadata will still be extracted and things like that, um, but uh, I think we've got a good story to tell you for paper and PDF as well as native. Obviously, we do you know a whole lot with native, but uh, that's my advice for PDFs. Um, yeah, another question. So somebody wanted to just confirm that this release of summation 6.0 is the, the latest release after 5.0. Yeah, you might want to back me up, but that's my understanding is we're going to go right from 5.6.3 to 6.0. There will be a jump. Great. Um, I did get a couple other questions, but we're, we're running low on time here. We only have about two minutes left, and I do want 
to um, be able to pass it back to Sean, our host. So if we haven't had a chance to address your questions on the phone right now, I promise we will get these questions after the event, and either Scott or your access data representative will follow up with you via email to address those questions and others that you might have. Um, I did just want to remind everyone, Scott, can you flip back real quick to that website? We have a, a landing page sure. that we've created to promote the 6.0 uh, release that's out in September. We will also have new brochures available out there for download as well. And this video recording um, of today's session will be made available from page two as soon as we get the recording and can get it uploaded on our YouTube site. We'll make it available on that website as well. Um, there is going to be a post webinar today. We'd really appreciate your feedback on how we did today and any other questions that you have following today's session. And with that, I will turn it back over to Sean, our WebEx host, to wrap us up. Thank God and Nadine for your help today. Thanks, thanks to all the attendees for attending. I really appreciate your time and for the questions as well. Thank you, everybody. All right, ladies, that will conclude the webinar for today. You may now